Hello, my name is Stephen Smith. Welcome to the channel and welcome to this video. Today we're going to discuss the Gusto Payroll Sync with QuickBooks Online. The quick agenda is where and how to set it up and we'll take a few tangents to explore some of the features such as account mappings and the sync settings. And then we'll look how it goes in into QuickBooks Online and we'll discuss things like matching, how to make sure everything is reconciled, that it's proper, and the actual journal entry. Let's start by going into the Gusto product. Here is the home page for Gusto. This is where you would enter your employees and other people, company settings, run payroll, take advantage of time tools if you need them, set up benefits, review taxes and compliance forms, check out reports, and visit the app directory where you can take advantage of a number of different synchronizations. We are going to search for the QuickBooks Online Sync. So you'll notice that we have three different headings here, mappings, settings, and about. The about has a nice brief video. There's also shortcuts to help articles and things like that. So let's take a closer look at what the mappings and settings features have. So in mappings, the first step would be to actually sync with your QuickBooks online account. Now that's already been done and that's pretty straightforward the first time you do it. So we're not gonna do that 101. This is going to be a slightly more deeper dive uh, video. Uh, but after you do have your sync set up and the chart of accounts in QBO is talking to Gusto, you have to map these accounts. So the easiest is the bank account. Bam, there it is. So you map the bank account. The next would be the wages. And you see that they give you quite a bit of granularity as to how you would like to map your wages, vacation, sick pay, etc., to different charts of accounts. So notice everything is running by the account list. Uh, there's no items or product services in QBO, just accounts. When it comes to the employer taxes, one thing worth noting is that you do not get the granularity that we saw up in wages. Uh, everything is really just employer taxes. There's no breaking out of FUDA, SUI, DUI, FICA, Social Security, etc. Everything goes to essentially one account payroll taxes. So that probably works for 95% of the time, uh, but sometimes people want a little bit more granular granularity there. The other deductions to be aware of is if you have garnishments or repayments, child support, uh, this also includes medical contributions, all of that would be set up here. This particular demo client does not have many, so that was a sample. If you do have deductions, it's worth noting that you find that under the people category, and you have to go into the actual individual individuals, and you would set those up down here, add garnishments or custom deductions. As you enter these things here, then it would show back up under the app mapping area. Notice that we're going back into this. Same thing with reimbursements. If there's reimbursements that you have, you can put that to a separate account. Now, one last category, which I was not super familiar with and I had to do a little bit of research on, is this taxes payable. Uh, according to Gusto, because I asked them, they said that this might arise if there was a an adjustment or a change in the tax rate of someone retroactively, and rather than taking it all out at once, they would amortize it over time. So it seems like a very rare instance. Okay, so now we're gonna look at one more thing here. It's mappings by department. But before we do that, we're gonna come over to settings because that's driven by settings. In the settings, we get five different options. Let's talk about each one. First is the sync. Do we want this to be automatic or manual? So if it's manual, you have to come into QBO, push the journal entry into QuickBooks Online, 
in order for it to, to be in QBO. If it's on auto, poof, it will just automatically sync at midnight or some at some predetermined set of time into your QBO file and it will be there automatically. I recommend the auto sync for this particular sync because it's pretty simple, it's pretty stable, it's pretty straightforward. So I like to just kind of set it and forget it, but that is a personal preference. The next feature that they're asking us is whether or not you're using contractor payments. I don't use contractor payments quite often. If I did, I'd want them separate. And what this means is that you would have a separate individual journal entry for every single one. The reason that I would set that as the default is because I would want separate journal entries, separate cash transactions to match to my bank feed. So that's why I would have that set to separate. The next feature, employer tax and tax consolidation. So this entry is saying, do you want to split out all of the different federal Medicare, SUI, DEWEY, FICA, that kind of stuff? Do you want it consolidated or not consolidated? I put don't consolidate. Now this is interesting to me because on our mapping, we don't actually get a lot of uh, discretion over, you know, how do I want these things mapped? But in the settings, it's asking if we want to see these line items in the journal entry. So you could manually change them if you needed to in the journal entry. And we will look at the journal entry and I'll show you exactly what that does uh, later in this, in this uh, demonstration. Finally, we have the journal entry consolidation. So what is this doing? There's, there's three things. There's de default, department, and job. So let's, let's break into this, uh, let's break out a little bit and discuss a little bit more about what that exactly means. There is a slide in Gusto, and here's what this slide says. You know, by job, department, and project. They are defining what they mean by, by job, department, and project. So one caveat is that typically in QuickBooks, or at least in, in, in my mind in, in, as a pro advisor, when I think job, we think job costing. And we want to be careful. This is not job costing. Uh, this is actually if you have multiple employees in the same role in like different, different titles. So let's, let's take a quick example of this. So in Gusto, when you go to team members and you select an employee and you scroll down to the compensation section, there is a field for job title. This is what it's referencing, job title. And it really is more of a title, not job costing. Examples of job titles might be if you're a restaurant, you might have a section for cooks versus servers. If you're in the movie industry, maybe it's producers versus production versus actors etc. And what you can do is then assign coding based on those jobs. So again, going back to our QBO settings, we have an option of job. And then that would allow you to group all of the total payroll dollars associated with that job in the journal entry. So other option is department. Now it does the exact same thing and notice that you can only select one. It's either job or department. But department, like job, is also set up at the team member level and it is done here at the top, department employee. So examples of departments might be if you are an S Corp, you want to separate employees from owners. You want to do partners from staff. Or if you have departments such as marketing versus manufacturing versus accounting. So that's where the department comes into play. You can only pick one, jobs or departments, but it can be useful when you're trying to segregate by employee and by employee type. But don't get too caught up on the the distinction between jobs and department, it's very similar. It's just referencing different fields in Gusto. QuickBooks Online does not really distinguish at these levels. 
And the final selection that we need to make is entry date. Uh, this is kind of kind of cool. Uh, I just think that debit date is really the primary date because again, my goal is to sync this into QBO and have it to match my bank feeds. Uh, also, I don't have many checks with any of the payrolls that I run. Everyone is on auto, so that kind of helps. And uh, it, because I do want to sync and I want to match it with the bank feed, uh, I don't do end of pay period. I suppose if you had accrual based accounting and you really wanted to match it, that this would be very valuable having end of pay period rather than having it be the actual date of, of draft. Uh, but for bank purposes, I don't know, personal preference, I chose debit date. So those are our settings. That is the mapping. Let's now take a look at QBO and see what happens with all of this data. Okay, here we are in QuickBooks Online. We are in the banking transactions section. This is all from a feed. And this is how Gusto activity kind of comes in from the bank. Notice that there are three different styles of, of Gusto drafts. It's actually four, but we're going to talk about the three of them at first. There's Gusto net. This is the net dollar amounts. Gusto tax. This is them drafting the taxes. And Gusto rem. This is if you are reimbursing your employees. There's one more and it's called Gusto fee. That is not pushed in, but that I have set up as a rule in QBO so that when it sees Gusto fee, it automatically knows to record this as a professional accounting charge. So now let's take a look at these individual journal entries. On January 4th, you can see they're all mapped. There's three drafts and they're all matching to a single journal entry in QBO automatically pushed by Gusto. And here is that journal entry. It is titled Gusto. This does not seem to change. I've been running it for a couple months and that seems to be the, the actual uh, journal number. And here we have a number of different lines. We'll skip to the bottom. Here are those three drafts, those three bank drafts that are coming out, the net, the reimbursements, and the tax. All these descriptions are automatically included and automatically populated. Remember the selection that we said we would like to see the taxes split by line? Well, here it is. Social Security, Medicare, FUDA, State, Workforce Development. Now, they're all mapped to the same payroll taxes. We did not get granularity in the mapping of that. But if you wanted to, you could come in and you could change it here. So that's one slight feature that I think that could be a little bit more robust do I think it's appropriate for 90% of the people? But still, it would be nice to have that option. Uh, then we also have the wages. In this case, there are both tips and wages. We do not distinguish between them. It's all payroll expenses for us. But if you wanted to, you could change the mapping, and that would be uh, an appropriate uh, example of that. Same thing with reimbursements. If you wanted this to be somewhere else, uh, other than payroll expenses, you would have to address that in the in the mapping. Uh, it does populate the date of the payroll, which is a nice feature. It, what it does not do is it does not put in any employee specific information. Even if you wanted to, I don't believe there is a way to get individual employee data into QBO from the Gusto Sync. I'd like to see that feature. Uh, so if there were some room for improvement, that would be one of them. Um, especially if we could just put names and we have all the payroll expenses split out. It'd be a much longer journal entry, but that would be okay if I could get that information. Okay, notice this is a very simple journal entry. There's no classes and there's no differentiation by department or job. Now let's look at a, another sample file that has a little bit of that. So here is a Gusto pushed journal entry. Again, the journal entry name is still, is still Gusto. And they put in the pay period. This, this customer does use classes. In this case, all the classes are the same. And they use departments. And we use a department to distinguish between the S-Corp owner 
and the staff. So how did that happen between classes and departments? Let's go back to Gusto and take a look. So here we are back in the app section. And if we scroll down, we look at the default mappings. We say, okay, everything is, is the same. Everything is similar. But down here when we have department, because we have the department turned on, we have the ability to override. And there are two departments, employee and owner. The employee does not need anything, but the owner, we do have an override. Whereas in this case, the owner has a owner department, then we have the ability to override the category and map it to a different QuickBooks Online account. In this case, payroll expense owner. Also, because this QBO file has class set up, it gives us the class option to select and we can select any different classes. So if the company has classes, then you'll see the class feature. If you don't have classes turned on, you would not see it up here. And again, that is the department, which is a setting that we select here in the journal entry consolidation. So that wraps up everything. Let's do a quick review. So here are the top five things to keep in mind. One, mind your mapping. Make sure that you have everything mapped properly to a chart of accounts in QBO that you like. Then review your settings. The particular settings to note is the job and the department details depending on how you have assigned the job title and or department to individual employees. Then once you have all of these things set up, QBO will push or you can manually do it. Either way, I like to match it to a bank feed and then to for super hands-free and automations, set a rule for the gusto fees and then everything is pretty much set and forget. Thanks very much to Gusto for developing this. I hope this was helpful. If there's any comments or questions, please leave them below and I can be reached via my website, quickencoach.com. Thank you.